Welcome back guys to what will be the second video of GPU June here in the channel and we're continuing our little brother big brother battles where we take two GPUs from the same chip designer but in different price tiers. Today the little brother will be the Radeon 9600 Pro and the big brother the Radeon 9800 Pro. Okay so you already know we're comparing the Radeon 9600 Pro with the Radeon 9800 Pro but the ATI 9000 series has such a cool lore that's impossible not to talk about it. So let's contextualize with the history of these video cards a bit. These are how many 9000 series cards ATI launched. So these were our notebook computer chips. And these were video cards of the entry value segment that utilized a revamped version of last generation's R200 chip, rebranded as the RV280. Now this is the bit where things get interesting. The 9700 Pro was the original flagship of this generation, it was revolutionary in many ways and upon release in August of 2002, it was the fastest consumer video card ever produced, beating the competition by a significant margin. Pixel Pipes made his last video completely dedicated to this video card and if you want to know more about this specific card, you should pause this video right now and go watch it, come back when you're done so we can continue our overview. The 9700 Pro utilized the brand new chip, the R300. A few months later, ATI released the 9700 Pure, with the only difference from the 9700 Pro being lower clock speeds. ATI had plans to fill in the other segments of the market, but while it developed cheaper ways of making the value chips, it reused the R300 chip from the 9700 on the 9500 Pro and the 9500. Both these cards had half the memory bus width of the 9700 Pro and the 9500 had half the pixel processing units disabled. Well, it turns out of course that some guys found out how to enable the disabled pixel processing units making this card a ridiculous value for the consumer while ATI wasn't making a lot of money on it. So now we get to our little brother. The 9600 Pro was supposed to be in the market placement of the 9500 Pro all along. In 2003, the 9500 Pro with the new value chip RV350 replaced the 9500 Pro with the capped R300 chip and although the 9600 Pro was a bit slower than the 9500 Pro, it was much cheaper to produce, giving back to ATI the profit margin it was lacking. The Big Brother, the 9800 Pro story is a bit different from the 9600 Pro. It used the R350 chip that was actually an improvement over the notoriously fast R300 from the 9700 Pro. So the 9800 Pro was basically a refresh of the 9700 released about 6 months later. Let's take a closer look at the specs of the little brother, the Radeon 9600 Pro. It was released in October of 2003 for $169 and it sports the RV350 chip fabricated in the 120 nanometers process and it came in 128 or 256 megabytes with a 128 bit bus. The one we're using here is the 256 megabyte card. The GPU runs at 400 megahertz while the memory runs at 300 megahertz. It has 4 pixel shaders, 2 vertex shaders, 4 texture mapping units, and 4 render output units. It's compatible with DirectX 9 and OpenGL 2.0. Released in March of 2003 for $399, the Big Brother Radeon 9800 Pro uses the R350 chip fabricated in the 150 nanometers process. It also came in 128 or 256 megabyte versions and it uses a 256 bit bus. The GPU runs at 380 megahertz while the memory runs at 340. It has 8 pixel shaders, 4 vertex shaders, 8 texture mapping units and 8 render output units. So basically double the bandwidth in everything in comparison to the 9600 Pro. It supports DirectX 9 and OpenGL 2.0 like its little brother. Enough jibber jabber, let's go to the games. I'm glad I'm back testing Mafia, this is one of my favorite games and it has been a while since I've played it. 
I believe this was one of the first successful GTA 3 clones and it was released in 2002. It takes place in the fictional city of Lost Haven in the 1930s where you embark on a mob plot as a soldier and as the story unravels you make your way through the ranks. The game stays mostly between 30 and 40 FPS on the 9600 and between 50 and 60 FPS on the 9800 Pro. Halo is also one of my favorite games to test. This was an original Xbox game ported to PC in 2003 and it's very demanding for the time. I'm not sure why the 9800 Pro was having issues rendering shadows so I disabled them for both the video cards. The 9600 really does a heroic job here keeping the game at a playable 30ish FPS with dips to low 10s in battles while the 9800 Pro stays mostly above 40 FPS but it does have big dips, even to low 20s sometimes. The shooting effects are extremely taxing in this game. From 2004 we have Doom 3 and this game is such a staple of 2000s game. This is another masterpiece of the Jedi Master programmer that brought us the original Doom game and many others, John Carmack. This game was showcased with impressive graphics on E3 2002 with the Radeon 9700 Pro. John Carmack himself mentioned while being interviewed that the R300 chip on the Radeon 9700 was ideal for Doom 3. Well. The R and the RV350 shouldn't be too bad either then. Luckily, Doom 3 has a time demo that we can run and have an objective result for once. On the 9600 Pro, we got 20.4 FPS and on the 9800 Pro, we got a much healthier 49.9 FPS. Since 2004 saw so many amazing releases, let's go ahead and take a look at another game from 2004, Far Cry. Different from Doom 3, Far Cry basically is an open world game where you must get to checkpoints and do certain things to complete your goals. Far Cry was developed on the CryEngine 1, the predecessor of Crysis that released a few years later and would run on the CryEngine 2. The 9600 Pro here manages to keep the game mainly between 30 and 40 FPS, while the 9800 Pro mostly runs the game at 50 to 60 FPS. To acquire one of their vehicles and drive to the helicopter refueling pad, it's on the other side of the island. Path of Neo is a game I tried running back in the day, but I only had a Radeon 8500 gifted to me by my good friend Falcon, so I was basically trying to play with a slideshow. This game was released in 2005 and it's the most demanding in our tests. Unfortunately the game is capped at 30 FPS making it a bit difficult to do the comparisons as well as the fight scenes that are extremely fast and complex which also make it harder to sync the images but not all interesting things are completely objective and this is a game I've been trying to slot in for a while. The game was written and developed by the Wachowskis, the original directors of The Matrix, so probably worth the look. For the performance, neither cards do a very good job here keeping the game smooth at its intended 30 FPS, but the 9800 does have a slight lead. Aquamark 3 is a benchmark provided by the bringers of the game Aquanox 2. It runs on the Crass engine. Same one used for Aquanox game series and others. This benchmark is from 2003 and although you can argue it's not the most precise benchmarking tool, it's one I enjoy using to have a general idea of how retro video cards stack up against each other. As a tradition, after running Aquamark we always place the video cards on our Aquamark chart and at the end we have a new number one video card dethroning the not so retro G4 7200 GS. The Radeon 9600 Pro took second place outperforming the G4 7200 GS by about 20%. Alright, so I have to confess I'm relieved we got through this one. I had lots of trouble, I started testing with the Pentium 4 but then I realized the Pentium 4 wasn't powerful enough for the 9800 Pro and I wasn't getting significant performance gains over the 9600 Pro so I had to put another system together for that I used an Athlon 64 
and I'm not even sure that had enough juice for the 9800 Pro but at this point there's not much we can do the Athlon 64 754 is one of the fastest platforms that still has a GP slots so what did you think of the results do you think the Radeon 9800 Pro is worth twice as much as the 9600 Pro and more sometimes the Radeon 9800 Pro is twice as fast as the 9600 Pro but not in many cases so once again the 600 series proves to be the sweet spot of the GPUs. So that was it, I hope you got some useful information or at least had some fun. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, like the video if red color video cards warm your heart, dislike the video if you have an iceberg for a heart and not even the heat of an Athlon Thunderbird can melt it. And I'll see you next time.